Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station. One, if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. As always, we are also simulcasting on No Borders Radio at nobordersradio.co.uk. TammyPepperman.org, as well as many others. Um, if you would like to donate to our web development service, you could do so by clicking on the support button under the No Borders Radio player at yeah, TammyPepperman.org. I apologize up front for my voice. Uh, today has been a very long day. Fun, interesting, extremely exciting as we enter fully into the new realm. Evidencing themselves everywhere. And the poor FBI agents, you know, psychiatrists and others that have been working for the federal state protocol are all whining and projecting and pointing fingers elsewhere and stomping their feet and crying and well, basically being jesters and sadly I am finding this entertaining I thought when the time come that I would feel bad for them but uh actually look like clowns fitting their gesture get up there from the cron.com infamous speed trap town investigated over tickets Waldo Florida the North Florida town of Waldo has long had a reputation as a speed trap and it's no wonder small segment of highway that runs through Waldo requires drivers to speed up and slow down six times 65 becomes 55 55 becomes 45 then goes back to 55 then goes back down to 45 to 55 again and eventually 35 miles per hour triple-a named the tiny town between Jacksonville and Gainesville one of the two only only two quote traffic traps and quote nationwide and even placed an attention getting billboard outside the limits of the town to warn drivers to slow down before entering. Now Waldo faces a scandal following allegations that the town victimizes motorists to turn a profit. Ironically, privateering has become unlawful in a turn of events or tables depending on how you look at it from the Washington Post.com quote the pathetic and predictable end for Bob and Donald in March 2012 I ranked the 10 most likely Republican vice presidential picks for GOP nominee Mitt Romney Bob McDonald ranked second on that list Today, roughly two and a half years later, the former Virginia governor was found guilty on 11 charges of pu public corruption tied to his and his wife's relationship with a donor named Johnny R. Williams Sr. While it's always dangerous to call anything in politics, quote, the largest and most rapid collapse in, in modern memory, end quote, the fall from political grace for McDonnell is absolutely stunning and ensures his spot in the ingominous annual annals of disgraced politicians with national ambitions right alongside John Edwards. What's even more remarkable for me, says this reporter, than McDonald's collapse, however, is the combination of stupidity, avarice, and total political blindness that led him to this day. Donald has long been touted to me by Republicans in the know as a rising star. 
You're socially conservative, but not in a way that scared establishment Republicans or independents. He was gifted communicator who knew how to stay on a message. And most importantly, he had the it factor, a combination of charisma and common touch that made people take notice. The talk grew when McDonald was elected state attorney general in 2005 and soared when he crushed state senator Craig Deeds, writing a Bob's for Jobs slogan to become the Commonwealth's governor in 2009. And for much of his term, McDonald's approval numbers seemed to defy the gravity that was dragging down other rising state politicians around the country. Think Nikki Haley in South Carolina, Scott Walker in Wisconsin, and John Kasich in Ohio circa 2011-2012. That reputation and his demonstrated record of political and policy success was what made Ross Helderman's initial reporting about the McDonald's relationship with Williams all the more stunning. The couple had adopted shopping sprees, elaborate wedding gifts, stays in fancy vacation houses, rides in expensive cars, straight cash and watches, among many, many other things. The list of what the McDonald's took from Williams really has to be seen to be believed. So here it is. And of course there's an image on here and you can find that at WashingtonPost.com blogs, The Fix, WP 2014, 9 for The Pathetic and Predictable End to Bob McDonald. I'll continue reading. There is simply no way that any politician who is as allegedly able and ambitious as McDonald would not understand that the relationship between his family and Williams was deeply inappropriate. It's unconceivable. And yet that was the case with the McDonald's sought, that the McDonald's sought to make in the weeks long trial that saw almost seven dozen witnesses called. McDonald, his lawyers argued, was simply doing for Williams what he would do for any Virginia businessman hoping to get attention for a product. An interesting quote. A governor who would do anything for businessmen hoping to get attention for a product. Parentheses, Williams was pushing a dietary supplement called Anatoblock, end parenthesis. That eye-rolling, difficult-to-believe justification for the parade of gifts showered on the McDonald's was made even less believable by a number of former aides to the governor and first lady who said they had repeatedly warned the two of impropriety of their relationship with Williams. The extent of that relationship, as detailed first by Helderman and then by the prosecutors, was such that there seemed very little doubt that after three days of deliberations, the jury would return a guilty verdict on at least some of the 14 counts, that the jury convicted McDonald of all 11 counts of public corruption speaks to the conclusiveness of the evidence presented against him and the tremendous folly of his actions. In the end, and this is the end, although McDonald has yet to be sentenced, I'm left with a feeling of amazement at the vast gap between how McDonald was regarded, including by me, as recently as two years ago, and who he turned out to be. His judgment, which was touted as one of his best attributes, wound up being one of the worst. McDonald's political career had long been over. The jury's decision simply cemented that fact and then put another two layers of cement on that cement, but the professional and personal decline confirmed by a jury of his peers on Thursday, remains stunning in the depth and, frankly, dumbness. Very last line, quote, politicians, they're just like us, for better, and in this case, worse. Yeah, politicians are not just like humanity in any way, shape, or form. Polycratus, of course, means to control and possess many, and those who practice such usually walk away with nothing, according to all of the written texts. From Salon.com, Neocons Insane New Strike, House GLP prepares modest bill authorizing perpetual war everywhere. Once again, 
hundreds of minions are working hard behind the scenes to create and maintain all of this as required by the uh, silent weapon for quiet wars there. Attorney arrested for playing whack-a-mole down in Texas. Interesting story today in the Amazon from RT. Amazon warriors fight off loggers. It's an interesting story because these folks apparently don't know what a politician is as they are hunting them. Illegal loggers have long invaded areas of the Amazon rainforest, tired of what they say is a lack of sufficient government assistance. The Ka'apur Indians feel it's time to take matters into their own hands. The tribe sends out their warriors who hunt down loggers and drive them off the land. The Ka'apur Indians are the legal inhabitants and caretakers of the territory along with four other tribes. Together they have set up monitoring camps in the areas that are being illegally exploited. So heads up for any politician or any businessman who wants to attempt to raise the Amazon. I'm all for protecting human beings. And as part of that, if a politician moves into any country and attempts to raise it, they're up for grabs. Hunt away. Again, to any and all investors, they would like to invest in this, in the inhabitants of any country, I say, go for it. Because you have a better bet if you're adhering to the truth. Because it's a sure one, rather than consensus reality and something that might occur, if you can maintain the presentation, according to the CIA. And you can read about this in the book. Four church committee reports, uh, supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign military intelligence. Page 12 ascertains the CIA's, of course, a production company. And uh, it's a lot cheaper just to adhere to the truth, and it cuts out the production company and all of those other little minions. And, uh, Cuts overhead, which is what they were looking for in Nazi Germany when the Bear Corporation came in and asked the world courts, which is Congress, to indemnify Poland. It just gets all messy when you're not adhering to the truth. Of course, it creates a lot of collateral damage. Back then, it was cheaper to put all the psychiatrists and social workers into boxcars and melt them with lye, for example, as they save money on bullets and gases and still effectively had their outcome. Today, it's being reported all over that Joan Rivers has passed away after a botched whatever at the, at the hands of, of the... Uh, attorneys who wanted to redistribute the estate, of course. Criticized attorneys have not been charged with wrongdoing. Uh, I'm loving this recent interest that the media is paying into these criminal actors. This is on the DailyTribune.com. Criticized attorneys have not been charged with wrongdoing. A pair of attorneys who were sharply criticized last year by the state appeals court for actions in a lawsuit filed in Macomb County maintain they did nothing wrong and have not been charged with any wrongdoing. Mount Clemens-based attorney Michael Tyndall and Plymouth-based attorney Mark Chabon were accused of violating the Michigan Professional Code of Conduct for filing what appeals judge called a frivolous retaliatory lawsuit against a former client in Macomb County Circuit Court in Mount Clemens. The appeals court last set November called their behavior egregious and outrageous and directed Judge John Foster to file a complaint with the Attorney Grievance Commission. Foster was also criticized for failing to dismiss his case shortly after it was filed in 2010, allowing it to proceed for two years, during which he erroneously appointed a receiver for the defendant's business. 
the appeals court said. More than 10 months after the COA opinion, the Grievance Commission has investigated, but there have been no formal charges made against the two attorneys or the judge who said they responded in writing to the inquiry by the Commission earlier this year, but said they have not heard back. <coughs> Excuse me. AGC probes are not public. If one would deem it appropriate, a formal complaint would be filed with the State Attorney Disciplinary Board, blah, 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 all the crap. But uh, it's nice to see the media picking up some of the slack and the furtherance of the well-being of humankind rather than national security. Monday, I began doing as I always do, open up my news feed to find a whole bunch of dead attorneys. And it began to bother me in the way that they are seemingly falling out of the sky, being killed in various accidents. And my concern is, is that their peers are not being held accountable. And let me get to those stories real quick because it's it was very concerning to me to see so many uh, attorneys being killed and there's no absolutely no probability or, or uh, statistical explanation for the latest round of attorney deaths now we were covering this this last year when it came to attorney suicide and we question again why so many are committing suicide what is this and and of course the media at that time it was very interesting to see that they had listed one of the signs of an attorney being suicidal was that it had cases so it was actually justifying you know attorney suicide which is crazy on its face anyway but uh, I think they've all gone nuts. Uh, as of Monday, it was a very busy week this week. I'm just, it's been exhausting. From uh, the dailyfreeman.com, Kingston City Court Judge charged in custody dispute. Kingston City Court Judge Lawrence Ball has been charged in Kingston City Court in a custody dispute with his estranged wife, six Ward Alderwoman Elisa Ball, according to a complaint filed in Kingston City Court on August 6th. The complaint alleges that on August 6th, at about 4 p.m., Judge Ball, quote, did intentionally and knowingly commit the misdemeanor of criminal contempt, end quote. They were signed by a city police lieutenant filed in Kingston City Court and then transferred to and received by the Hudson City Court on August 14th. According to Alderwoman Ball's complaint, Judge Ball picked up the couple's three children, Connor, Park, Parker, and Turner, on August 6th without his, her permission and in violation of the state Supreme Court order giving the Alderwoman custody of the children during summer break. Balls are in the process of divorcing, according to Ulster County Clerk Nina Postipak, who confirmed that their divorce papers are on file in her office. Hudson City Court Clerk Rosemary Zukowski said that Judge Ball was not arraigned in Hudson. Hudson, she said a court date will not be set until we figure out the logistics of who's prosecuting the case, but we can't call the calendar the case. An Ulster County Clerk Clerk declined to comment and referred calls to the State Office of Court Administration, asked whether Judge Ball will be removed from the bench as a result of the arrest. David Bur Book. Staver of the State Office of Court Administration said, quote, that may be a matter for the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. For more information on this one, you can go to the dailyfreeman.com. From WKSU.org, High Court disqualifies Cuyahoga, ju Cuyahoga judge charged with kidnapping and assault. Ohio Supreme Court says a Cuyahoga County Common Pleas judge is disqualified from hearing cases after a grand jury issued a five-count felony indictment against him. 
Judge Lance Mason was indicted by the grand jury Tuesday. He was arrested on August 2nd after allegedly biting and punching his wife as they drew, drove through a suburb with their young daughters in the back seat. Mason was indicted on two first-degree felony counts of kidnapping and three second-degree felony counts of felonious assault. He was also indicted on misdemeanor counts of domestic violence and endangering children. Mason will remain disqualified while the indictments are pending. On the same channel, WKSU.org, more trial charges filed in massive credit union fraud case. Toledo water official resigns following water crisis. An Ohio family wants federal investigation into a police shooting. An attorney for the family of a man fatally shot by police at an Ohio Walmart is calling for the U.S. Justice Department to open a civil rights case. It's interesting, uh, all of these things that are going on. Uh, from Jezebel.com, interesting reporting source, Florida judge charged with over a dozen instances of improper conduct earlier this year. Circuit Court Judge Linda Schoonover was removed from a case after sending one of her litigants a friend request on Facebook and then allegedly retaliating against the litigant when her request was denied. You're going to like me or I will punish you. <laughs> These things are crazy. What the hell are they thinking? Are they this narcissistic to actually believe that people have to worship gods of demigods of Baal? From RT.com USA, Guatemala defines... Monsanto law pushed by U.S. as part of its trade agreement. It's interesting to see the pushback there. From the DailyMail.co.uk, top lawyer, 31, killed in bike crash, leaving her lesbian partner to raise their new baby daughter alone. A top Seattle lawyer has died after a truck crashed into her, her bike, leaving her partner to bring up their seven-month-old daughter alone. Sher Khan, 31, was riding in the bike lane along 2nd Avenue in the city on Friday morning when a truck made a left turn and struck her. She died at the scene. Tragic accident came less than two weeks before the city plans to improve safety for cyclists at that intersection. What a coincidence. What? <laughs> what a coincidence. From the Denver.cbslocal.com, eerie plane crash victims identified, wreckage moved to Greeley. Erie, Colorado, the five people who perished in Sunday's plane crash in Erie have been identified. They are Oliver Fra Frascona, 67, his friend, Tori Rains Whedon, 41, and her three children, Mason Whedon, Austin Whedon, and Hunter Whedon. They were killed when their Piper PA-46 crashed near the runway at the Erie Municipal Airport north of Denver. Witnesses said the plane appeared to try to land when it hit the ground shortly before noon. Two were transported to an area hospital, including one by helicopter, but they both died. A dog on board also died. Officials with the National Transportation Safety Board said the landing gear was stowed and the pilot was attempting to land from the south when the plane crashed. Some witnesses said they heard the plane's engine sputtering, but an NTSB spokeswoman said it was too early in the investigation to say whether that contributed to the crash. <coughs> oh, sorry. It's starting to... Uh, Reload the page on me in the middle. Sorry about that, folks. Still trying to... Well, we're in the preliminary stage of collecting the facts. Until we can analyze the facts, we can't comment on that. The MTSB's Courtney leader said the agency's preliminary report is due in five to ten days, it said. 
Well, we have not taken any factors out of consideration, so we'll be looking at man, the machine, and the environment, end quote. Because you remove the wreckage Monday afternoon to a salvage yard in Greeley, where it will be investigated for clues. Friends and neighbors said Frescona had a passion for flying. Yesterday morning, I watched him take off. I was right here, and everything looked good and normal, said Tom Van Loan, who lives across the street from Frescona, whose house sits near a runway at the airport. A partner at the real estate law firm where Frascona worked remembered the passengers fondly on Monday. Quote, everyone on that plane touched the lives of many. The law firm mourns their tragic death. May they all live on in the memories of those that love them, said John Goodman, who worked with Frascona for 21 years at Frascona, Joyner, Goodman, and Greenstein in Boulder. There have been several plane crashes at the airport in the area in the last few years. The last one that involved fatality was in May 2011, the Associated Press reported. I'm just falling out of the sky now. From the TwinCities.com. So freeze up. Sorry about that, folks. Hmm. TwinCities.com, first green line fatality under investigation. Another accident. Woman killed by green line train was a former attorney. Now, folks, what are the odds? Uh, everybody out there, I mean, these are, these are impossible, probable, you know, on, on its face. But absolutely impossible. Sick stuff. You've got these psychopaths out there whacking each other now. The, 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 the most recent attorney that was trying to whack um, the informant that rolled on him down there in Texas. I mean, that's just like a week ago. and This is just sick. The woman struck and killed Sunday morning by a Green Line light rail train on University Avenue has been identified, says the TwinCities.com. Shannon Buchanan, 42 of Minneapolis, was hit by a train shortly after 10 a.m. in the 3400 block of University Avenue Southeast near the St. Paul, Minnesota, Minneapolis border, according to the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office. She was pronounced dead shortly before 10.30 a.m. The circumstances and cause of Buchanan's death are under investigation. There was a first fatality on the Green Line since it opened on June 14th. Buchanan was attempting to cross the tracks on a pedestrian, a pedestrian walkway from the south side of the railway to the north side at the Westgate Station near University Avenue and Emerald Street, according to Metro Transit. Spokesman Bruce Howard. Buchanan, who leaves behind a 14-year-old son, formerly worked as a criminal and appellate attorney in Minneapolis, according to her father, Tom Lois of St. Paul. The loss of Bruce has been devastating for the family, he said. Quote, it is worse than anything you can ever imagine, end quote. 2012, the Minnesota Supreme Court placed Buchanan on disability and active status. After the Office of Lawyers Professional Responsibility filed a disciplinary petition against her, a referee found that she had been diagnosed with a, quote, serious mental illness, and, quote, for which she was receiving treatment. She was barred from practicing law. According to her online LinkedIn profile, she was working most recently as a legal consultant. Isn't that what the... the uh, whatever his name is from uh, the aftermath of Katrina. At first he worked with horses and then he went into uh, consulting. And they all do, all these politicians. Bo and Rocker's show was great last night. Bo was talking about how um, you know, these politicians just change faces. And one of the most profound was Brown, Prime Minister Brown. Uh, got all out of the uh, UK, quote, UK administration, and he went right into the American administration banking. And uh, they, they, everybody else does too. You watch these things in the media and you, you believe these corrupt 
fellows and, and all of these things are actually being punished or moved about. They're only being moved about in, inside of the corporation to a different department to be just as efficient as they used to be, but now they're the behind the scenes. So, so you're not seeing the faces or the hands that are actually running the business. Calling out the deaths of attorneys, for example. This is this is interesting that all of a sudden Rick Perry, general counsel, is under indictment, and then all of these attorneys start dying in droves, and uh, agents they're absolutely in chaos. Everybody's whining and screaming and killing each other and everything else in it. You know, if I didn't know any better, it looks like Rick Perry's behind the scenes uh, flapping his mouth about his peers, which is interesting because he's actually one of the highest positions in the uh, trafficking industry. And sadly, because of his financial ability and his position and his charisma and character and all of these things, there's going to be a lot of follow guys, of course. I mean, it just follows the... Uh, uh, business schematic of politics itself. Well, here's one. You know, we talk a lot about what the U.S. Incorporated did in Iraq when uh, Saddam Hussein did not want to join up with the Confederacy. They just whacked him and told the sheeple that he had weapons of mass destruction and all this garbage by which to enable them and allow them to do that. Ironically, Castro, Castro has come forward from RT.com. The headline reads, Castro compares NATO to Nazi SS, slams U.S. and Israel for creating ISIS. Cuba's former president, Fidel Castro, compared NATO's recent statements to that of Nazi SS and accused the U.S. and its allies of igniting conflicts abroad. Castro slammed John McCain for backing Israel and accused both of being involved in the creation of ISIS. Absolutely. He knows how they took over his country at one time, how they vilified him, how they redistributed him using his wife. All the fun stuff that comes with politics. I'll continue reading. Apparently referring to the pressure the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO has been trying to exert on Moscow in connection with the Ukrainian crisis, which coincides with calls for the ramping up of military budgets of NATO member countries, Cuba's iconic leader accused Western politicians of hypocrisy and aggression. Well, usually that's just called war, but hypocrisy and aggression will suffice. Quote, many people are astonished when they hear the statements made by some European spokesmen for NATO when they speak with the style and face of the Nazi SS. End quote. Castro wrote in a column published in Cuban state media. Quote, Adolf Hitler's greed-based empire went down in history with no more glory than the encouragement provided to NATO's aggressive and Burgoy governments, which makes them the laughing stock of Europe and the world. Of course, Burgoy constitutions are uh, liberalism, for one, enabling such as feminism to be employed <laughs> across the globe by which to distribute every male and move them outside of the ability to protect the females and children, which is what Congress requires. Congress is a predator of females and children, and to do that, it needs the males away from the ability to protect. And that's why you're seeing these dowry harassment laws in India and International Violence Against Women Act and Violence Against Women Act and Ch Crimes Against Children Act. These are all privacy laws protecting the politicians that are raping and molesting your children, your sisters, your grandmothers, your aunts, wives.
continue reading from RT.com. He accused McCain of supporting Israel's Mossad intelligence agency as well as participating, quote, together with that service in the creation of the Islamic State, which today controls a considerable and vital portion of Iraq and reportedly one-third of Syria as well. Don't take his word for it. The FBI came out in 2012 and said they were the extremists. Book 4 of the Church Committee reports, supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign military intelligence says right there in their own hand that the CIA is a production company. And everybody was able to witness this with their own eyes with Ferguson, Missouri when the FBI gunned down an 18 year old unarmed black male and then tried to point the finger at the citizenry to call humanity racist when the FBI is only 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 working for its employer the 1924 racial integrity act passed by congress said that the FBI should be killing black people it also says that the FBI should be killing mentally deficient human beings as well. And we've seen that in the prison industry run by the Department of Justice, which is also the same judiciary. A judge orders the removal of any and all human beings that are contrary to national security. Corporate counsel facilitates this as they discharge congressional bankruptcy using the human being as that negotiable instrument by which to do so. Castro attacked the West for its cynicism and said that it became a quote symbol of imperialist policy. Yeah, 1648 Treaty of Westphalia kind of was the icing on the cake when Rome restructured and became what is known as the United States of America fully in 1941 with the Atlantic Charter. There's no third ally there. There's no uh, triad. There's no uh, none of this stuff. It's Congress. It's been Congress since 1941 Atlantic Charter. It appears to be other things. It's still the same actor. Quote, the world has, been, has seen no respite in recent years, particularly since the European economic community, under the strict and unconditional leadership of the United States, decided the time had come to settle scores with what was left of the two great nations, Russia and China, that had carried out the heroic deed of putting an end to the imperialist colonial order imposed on the world by Europe and the United States, Castro said. Now remember, the United Kingdom is an oxymoron. That is not England. It is also not a kingdom. There is no such thing as a United Kingdom. It's either going to be a corporation or it's going to be a kingdom. I'll continue reading. Instead of promoting conflicts, the government should, quote, introduce more food. He says build hospitals. However, that's the way that they pick up prisoners of war through the 1864 Geneva Convention. So we would like to see a decrease in hospitals, which we're seeing now as they close down. And of course, he says in schools for the billions of human beings who desperately need them. No, education started out as part of the depopulation program. It stems from the word pedagogy or attendance on boys, which is removal of the firstborn son and how Castro lost his ass to the United States Incorporated years ago. He too was indoctrinated just as much as Net Netanyahu and Stalin and Hitler all racing for that book. 
Now, of course, Castro's pretending to be the victim here. The United States Incorporated and Cuba have been in agreement forever through the naval treaties to traffic human beings amongst themselves and each other. You can find that at Yale's Law Library, Rainy Law Library. Instead, uh, Castro stressed that Cuba will continue to resist the U.S. by appearance only, despite the cost of the Cuban economy due to the U.S. embargo. Of course the United States is holding something over their head. The FBI doesn't ever do anything but But does it hurt Castro? No. Who does it hurt? Human beings. The Castro is projecting or, or pretending that he is protecting as much as the United States Incorporated is doing the same thing, which is a bottom line the reason everybody lost their Treasury Commissions. Treasury is only for the protection of human beings. Not the redefined, quote, person, meaning corporation, that allows corporate welfare to be maintained, but actual human beings. Now, if you want to read that story, it is on RT.com. Headline is Castro compares NATO to Nazi SS, slams U.S. Israel for creating ISIS. And of course, Israel was infiltrated, the country, the landmass, or what was proposed as the IMS, was infiltrated in 1948 when Congress came in, slaughtered all of the citizens, took a lot of them into refugee status, got them to patronize them within the action of hearts and minds, which is a good war tactic, buried all the bodies, promoted through the U.S. controlled media that there was something else going on, not that. Congress was raising anybody, just like always. CIA group at that time. No, uh, 1948 would have been the year after the CIA was created out of the CIG, which is the Central Intelligence Group. And again, you can read that in Book 4 of the Church Committee Reports. It's all right in there. We speak a lot about Nazi Germany here. Because of the 1924 Racial Integrity Act that uh, made off-color humans targets, as well as those that are mentally infirm. Now, everybody has seen the presentations of Nazi Germany. People walked into gas chambers and in front of firing squads. But when it happens in, quote, the U.S. Incorporated, nobody's realizing what that actually is. I would like to revisit a story that came up a couple months ago from the MiamiHerald.com. Behind bars, a brutal and unexplained death. The purported details of Darren Rainey's last hour are difficult to read. Quote, I can't take it no more. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. He screamed over and over, according to a grievance complaint from a fellow inmate. As Rainey was allegedly locked in a shower with the scalding hot water turned on full blast. A 50-year-old mentally ill inmate at the Day Correctional Institution, Rainey was pulled into the locked shower by prison guards as punishment after defecating in his cell and refusing to clean it up, said the fellow inmate who worked as an orderly. He was left there unattended for more than an hour as a narrow chamber filled with steam and water. When guards finally checked on prisoner number 060954, he was on his back and dead. His skin was so burnt that it was shriveled from his body, a condition referred to as slippage, according to a medical document involving the death. All of the listeners know what slippage is, because when you put a piece of meat in the oven, ultimately the skin starts to pull away from the meat as it is cooked. 
this mentally disabled man, human being, in the United States Incorporated, Florida, was cooked inside of a prison, but you're still horrified about the gas chambers and the firing squads. A mentally ill human being was cooked for an hour in your backyard by your government. This only happened a few months before Michael Brown was gunned down by an FBI agent. This happened before a human being was choked to death by NYPD. And this happens while so many are institutionalized and dying every single day from, quote, prescription drug overdoses to the tune of 42 females per day in the United States Incorporated. This is a depopulation pogrom. The mentally ill, females, children, blacks, disabled, browns, off color anybody are targets of Congress's depopulation pogrom. The Federal Republic of Germany is a corporation located in the District of Columbia. Israel is a corporation located in the District of Columbia. Ukraine, Moscow, China, all of them are located in the District of Columbia. Now, let us go to the truth. Last October, almost 1,500 Syrian children were gassed by the same Hitler that did it last time. Today, that same Hitler is perpetrating war upon citizens in the Ukraine, in Russia, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Israel. And that same Stasi agency, the FBI, otherwise known as Hamas, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, is still perpetrating the same war against you continually. In 1974, Dr. Henry Kissinger, Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council, maintained that depopulation should be the highest priority. By 1975, he had established a quick and efficient means of doing that through what is known as the Office of Population Affairs. I urge everybody to go to the Office of Population Affairs at your own government. I'm not going to give you a link. I want you to see it yourself. Google Office of Population Affairs. When that comes up, click on it and you will see that it is the Department of Health and Human Services, which is also listed on Don and Bradstreet as Rick Perry. He's also listed as the general counsel. I urge everybody again to go to the general counsel site in Texas. And you can view everything, including its choreographer, or the one that puts on all of these court uh, presentations when you go to court. There is no law. There is no uh, justice. There is jesters and gestures in black dresses facilitating quote court process through the court sciences incorporated 
which says, it's not only the underwriter, it's the choreographer. Hallelujah, we found a way to ensure everything and guarantee that it occurs. We don't have to leave anything to chance. Our process can be choreographed. Of course, that's not Nazi Germany. I don't know what is. All of these folks recently have been dogging on Kim Jong-un for some reason. Now, of course, we know that the United States Incorporated likes to sanction the guy and keep him on his knees so that they, he doesn't have the control, blah, 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 blah. I really want to go into depth on that one because this week some of his prisoners are complaining and they're in the media again. One of them has perpetrated espionage against North Korean state. Now, in this interview, it's very interesting that um, it said there's never been any human rights violation and that Kenneth Bay is working eight hours a day, eight hours only, six days a week, meaning he has a day off. And the story goes on to say that none of the prisoners have complained of human rights violations. Quote, all said they were treated fairly by the North Korean authorities and has been allowed to contact their families. And of course, Mr. Bay was charged with the equivalent of espionage. And under 18 U.S.C., subsection 794, the United States incorporated its own laws. That allows for a death sentence in the U.S. Inc. Now, Kim Jong-un has only sentenced Bay to 15 years of, quote, hard labor, although he's only working eight hours a day, and he's got one day off. Now let's look at the flip side in the United States Incorporated for a moment. A New Jersey woman who worked four jobs died while napping in her car. She couldn't afford to live. So by fourth generation warfare, low intensity conflict, here's a female, you know, because the IMF controls all the inflation rates, the federal state controls the minimum wage, all of these things, and, and all of this horrifying uh, prison dynamic around everybody. Uh, New Jersey woman trying to nap in her car between working four jobs dies of fume inhalation. Maria Fernandez, 32 of New York, Newark, New Jersey, was allegedly overcome by a mixture of carbon monoxide fumes from an overturned gas can. Fernandez kept extra gas in the car because she sometimes ran out. Police say it appears she just pulled over for a nap as she desperately tried to make ends meet. Kenneth Bay doesn't have that problem. He's working eight hours a day. And this report says that she was working up to three shifts per day, which is everything. That's 24 hours. New Jersey woman reading from the dailymail.co.uk. New Jersey woman who worked four jobs died while apparently napping in her car. Elizabeth, please say it appears 32 year old. 32 years old! Maria Fernandez of Newark was overcome by a deadly mixture of carbon monoxide and fumes from an overturned gas container. She kept the extra gas in her 2001 Kia Sportage because she occasionally ran out of gas, authorities said. Yeah, that's probably really comfortable to sleep in a car, too. Uh, of that size, like it, the Kia Sportage, isn't that like a little uh, a geo? Lieutenant Daniel Solner tells the Star Ledger of New York, it sounds like someone who tried desperately to work and make ends meet met with a tragic accident. She worked four jobs, including two shifts at separate Dunkin' Donuts. Solner says an autopsy failed to determine the cause of death and police are awaiting toxicology test results. No foul play is suspected. The federal government is guilty of murder. If you're laying out a, a federal minimum wage and on the back end you are the directors of the International Monetary Fund which controls the inflation rates, you're directly responsible for these deaths. And we'll be back after the break, folks. Stick around. Hi, and welcome back. 
to the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station. If you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com. Click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. Join us in chat. Check out the store. All that good stuff. We're also simulcasting on TammyPepperman.org. No borders radio.co.uk as well as two insert. I think they said seven others. Um, if you if you are broadcasting, just let me know and I'll let our listeners know where to find us, of course. Um this has been a profound interesting journey say the least now of course we've got an agent that outed himself in defense of pedophiles this last week and then he's all up in a huff because we actually presented that to everybody so that they can be aware of not only the pedophilia that's surrounding this whole global community but who the actors are where they like to hide and what they like to present so that people will engage with them by which to prey on children. And of course, it did make them any not too happy. I've been hearing it for the last few days as he incessant, incessantly, incessantly argues that there must be something wrong with me, although there's evidence that he protected a pedophile. Of course, he claims against Rocco, which is hilarious. This guy, he wants to believe so bad that Rocco's all locked up and everything's just failing for us. And the United States is just hurting so bad because that's what he wants to believe, contrary to all of the evidence that says otherwise. Just so all of the agents and psychiatrists know, of course, you know the word, cognitive dissonance and the fallback on the easier to believe truth once again sadly that never works to protect you if you are looking the other way while your handlers cannibalize you uh, it doesn't do anything for your self-protection or preservation. Now, once again, I'd like to call attention to this attorney arrested in murder for hire plot, San Antonio. This is on KSAT.com. San Antonio, an attorney who practices law in Corpus Christi and maintains an office in San Antonio, was arrested now last Wednesday for criminal solicitation of capital murder. The arrest warrant was issued for Paul Andrews, 57, in San Antonio after a joint investigation by the District Attorney Susan D. Reed's office and the Texas Rangers revealed they planned to have a man killed. The man is a key witness in a case where Andrews and other attorney, Keith Gould, 52, were indicted for a third-degree felony offense of barratry arising from allegations that the two men paid a case runner to solicit and refer personal injury cases to the law firm. And again, to all the agents that claim this is not piracy, keep looking the other way so that you can be cannibalized efficiently, I guess. Because that's what your handlers are pushing for and what you are consenting to as you come upon me and try to argue the evidence, which of course is bear tree, the practice of law or piracy. And again, I urge everybody to read the rules of shipping, 46 U.S.C., specifically 46 U.S.C. 313, subsection 313.25 through subsection 313.41. If you would like further information on this and what is occurring. We were reading in the first hour about... Uh, Fidel Castro 
and how all of this gameplay goes on and how other quote governments are terrorized by the United States Incorporated and of course this is facilitated through usually what is known as fourth generation warfare it's not in your face from one dot or new report one trillion dollars siphoned from poor countries every year the one campaign has just launched a campaign exposing the biggest heist you've ever heard of one's analysis shows that more than a trillion dollars is siphoned from poor countries every year by criminals corrupt officials and dodgy secretive firms this is not aid money, which is making a tangible difference, but money laundering, corrupt deals for natural resources, drug trafficking, and much more. If poor countries were able to crack down on this scandal, tax it at normal rates, and spend it on basic health care systems, it could raise enough money to have saved an average of 3.6 million lives a year. If it's so obvious, why don't poor countries make the changes and get cracking on saving lives? Well, of course they can't. They're subjected like Kim Jong-un was through United States sanctions and like Palestine is with the trade embargoes and establishment of the West Bank. Congress has spread itself across the globe to terrorize everybody equally. As it says in its constitution, all slaves are going to be treated equally, 14th Amendment. Corporations shall never go hungry or homeless. Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation pledging human beings as assets, pledged assets, to ensure corporate welfare according to the first and second welfare theorem. Why can't poor countries fight back? They don't start out third world third world country only happens after Congress raises it. It's a perpetual Agamemnon. If you want to read the originals or the original concept, you can go read the Iliad by Homer. Of course, all of the text stemming from the Homeric hymns and translated out to you of Babel so that you don't know what's going on. You hate each other. Come on, we don't like brownies. We don't like blackies. We don't want like whiteies today. We don't like Christians. We don't like Jews. We don't like anybody except for Congress. Corporations, yeah. General counsel. Corporate counsel, which is charging congressional bankruptcy by the action of bottom re-diagnosis and repair. Let's throw up another hospital, shall we? We'll collect some more prisoners of war with the Red Cross. That's the interesting thing this year and all of the changes that have been occurring. First one is the requirements for attorneys if they still want to be attorneys under the new bar standards. Bar standards. That's when it's very, very important for everyone, federal agents, humanity, Congress members, all of those of the New World Order. Because your mind, too, has been perverted away from the original. Originally, when the Treasury Commission was first authorized to form governments, this was intended to protect humanity, of course. And there was a bar standard that says, well, you're not to violate the public law. No harm. Do no harm. Along came this Guild of Attorneys and it says, well, we're going to set up a bar association and we're going to redefine these things. We're going to be the government. And of course we can see that with the lower chambers of the House of Representatives, the House of Delegates that have full control over the American Bar Association. Again, please look higher because that thing is not the standard. 
which is the delineation between the public law and the acts of commerce and private acts, which define what is and what is not a sovereign state. 28 U.S.C. Chapter 97 explains further, as well as the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity, there is none under acts of commerce and private acts or uh, jury gestionis. Things like that do not carry with it immunity or sovereignty of any kind. When you're in the action of harming a human being and identifying yourself as a psychopath, but getting back to the starting point before I go out any further into a event, things changed this year. When the standard was risen, the bar was raised, attorneys suddenly found themselves having a little quandary in order to maintain the action of being an attorney. There is now a requirement for a psychological evaluation to determine whether or not they are a human being or a psychopath, which is the foundation of public law, of course. I don't want anybody around me that's willing to shank me for a buck. It's been interesting, to say the least. Excuse me. You know, it's so sad there's a lawsuit in the works for um, what just occurred against Joan Rivers. Uh, she went in for a routine procedure and found herself dead within just a few days. And of course, we've already covered all of this with uh, Bo's mother killed the same way, Joseph Reynolds, Bonnie. And again, it goes right back to Memorandum 200 of the National, um, sorry, Henry Kissinger directed to the National Security Council that says depopulation should be the highest priority. And of course, this lawsuit, the attorneys get in there, they're all ambulance chasers. And Melissa's going to pay out some of her hard-earned money, and the attorneys are going to cash in, and ultimately, they might or might not find that she was murdered and five, ten years from now, maybe based on principle. Melissa will win a couple hundred thousand dollars after spending so much, usually in the millions, uh, as we can uh, evidence ourselves, especially this last week, what was it, Governor Christie had spent $50 million in the last year alone on attorney fees as they redistribute him fully, while still keeping him special. Of course, Andrew Cuomo came in and recently and his office thought to investigate some criminal activity so it sent out a subpoena oh boy when Cuomo realized that the subpoena was going to him directly and he's the offender oh that subpoena was pulled back in a heartbeat it's a lot like the actions of Rick Perry no no don't investigate me we don't want any investigation into the corruption of my office are you crazy? I'm not going to pay for that. I'm going to veto that one. Well, as you can see, it doesn't work that way. Reality, evidence speaks for itself. It's interesting. Got a caller on the line. Are you there? Hey, it's... Hey! Kurt Martin, a.k.a. United States. How are you? Good. Different number there. Um, what's going on? I'm just, it's been a busy week. Um, all of these agents. What's on your mind? Well, I just happened to notice today that uh, on the uh, front page of Daily Mail, where everything's kind of on the front page, um, and uh, I don't like that script they're running, but uh, I managed to find a computer here that seems to handle it. But anyways, there are four, no less than four uh, pieces demonizing the uh, 
police state and the and, and cops. And um, there's a few of them that are very telling here. I'll start with this first one. Police officer who wrote on Facebook that Ferguson cop did society a favor by killing black teen Michael Brown is put on administrative leave. Only administrative leave for saying something like that in accordance with the 1924 Racial Integrity Act. Yeah. Well, it's a start. Once they get him in the shoot, then there's all kinds of different things that uh, hit the path along the way down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As we've seen lately. and, and it, But it, it's comforting for them, I think. So I just, yeah, I just like to see him in the shoot. Right. Despite what the charge is or, you know, released on bail, any of that, attorney work product doctrine stuff, getting them to be displayed in the shoot because we know that they're already in the shoot if they're evidence to be a, an attorney, a psychopath, a corporation, FBI, agents, right, right agents that were formerly not held as prisoners of war are now being held. As per, and this is all per our agreed entry, I keep trying to tell the agents out there that, okay, we've got this agreed entry, here it is, here's the link to the Dropbox, go read it, and then they then they go and talk about uh, something else, uh, you know, they want to project back on you, you're, you know, right. invoke title, or you're just a moron. That was the saddest thing this week, you know, we've been, you know, laughing, of course, because these jesters are dancing all around and screaming and throwing fits and stuff. But the saddest part was at the inception. You know, we, we try to tell these lower agents, hey, look, you need to look around at your peers and stuff. And, and that, that is out of luck. If you're innocent, we want to get you out of the line of fire. You know, a lot of these uh, officers are so innocent. But, um, boy, man, they, 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 these ones recently that have been attacking us are, are definitely not innocent. And the protection of pedophilia and stuff like that, and it's just, the, the false allegations. The minute we, you know, evidence their works and, and put that up on YouTube, you can find that over at Bonus Entertainment, the uh, Master Lewis video. But um, it, it's been absolutely profound because then the result of that uh, was, you know, projecting onto others, making false. And, and there was more things he said I could have put up. I just didn't for time constraints. I right. I save all that stuff to a file. Absolutely. And we just we just. Uh, we only deal with it on the side here. Absolutely. So anyway, just to tie up this story, then Jason Lentz, a 17-year-old veteran of the Elgin Police Department in Illinois, is under investigation after colleagues discovered multiple racially charged Facebook posts. Wow. So, and and that, that location is also another uh, development project, and, th and that goes in line with the North Korea, Illinois project so many years ago when they started this crap by putting black people in one neighborhood, white people in one neighborhood, brown people in another neighborhood, and then they began pitting them against each other. And, and if an FBI agent comes along and kills a black child or a white child or a Mexican child or whatever, then they can blame the society for that and say, oh, it must have been your neighbor because who's going to investigate? Everybody got to see with their own eyes Ferguson, Missouri, when the FBI killed an unarmed black baby, then 40 more FBI agents came in to, quote, investigate. Then they wrapped the National Guard around themselves to protect corporate counsel from any fallout as humanity began to realize, wait a second here. This is the same thing that happened during the Civil War when Congress made slavery legal and then pit everybody against each other and told them that they did it. It's the same schematic. Humanity is not racist. We love each other. But this has always been the game. And, and of course, now they're realizing, uh-oh, Civil War risks are not covered by cover hold insurance. Uh, war is not covered by a cover hold insurance in these hedge funds. Hedge funds managers were seeing that their heads lapped off now, and and uh, it's just it's a wild, wild, wild time right now. Everybody seems to be in chaos. So going on, I got another one here. Yeah, just to show you. 
Police officer pulled gun on black off-duty firefighter as he left fire station with his two young sons. Firefighter Keith Jones was with his 9 and 12 year old sons on August 15th at an Oakland fire station when he was confronted by a cop with his weapon drawn and told to put his hands up. Sure. On the video, the firefighter can be heard trying to calm one of his sons down um, uh, who was crying during the frightening all interaction. Terrorism. Let's just Oakland, call it for what it is. Now, now get this, though. Oakland PD said that the officer acted within policy. Absolutely. He's paid to terrorize people, and he needs to be removed from the ability to do so. Corporate counsel needs to be removed as his director. Now, let me point out here, these, cop, these cops all acting within, quote-unquote, policy, where the policy comes from. Policy which means to kill many, by the way, which we've defined over and over again here, is uh, handed down by attorneys. Okay, so with all of these sites out there, um, policemisconduct.net, uh, cop block, um, and there's all kinds of them out there these days uh, exposing cops, none of them are pointing the finger behind the curtain where the Wizard of Oz is, is pulling all the levers that creates all these policies. Right, or the indoctrination center that they use. The Ursa Institute actually indoctrinates law enforcement to uh, adhere to that policy along with Polaris. And it says this on their site. So, okay, who, uh, uh, you know, dictates that they have to go to these educational centers for cops but lawmakers and attorneys right and and especially the the most influential is their weekly ADA meetings the Association of District Attorneys when all of the cops and everybody get together to to uh, talk about their newest uh, schematics and things and, and these cops are kept in the dark and and um, only told on a need-to-know basis what they need to know by their attorney handlers and it's sad because it, this is what allows law enforcement to be ruled on and, and again we don't like to see law enforcement ruled on at all well if they're a psychopath that they've you know chosen their form of government and you know they're uh, they're standing uh, under that attorney protecting them uh, head and foot uh, I've got no use for them under the public law. They need to go away with the rest of the psychopaths. Absolutely. And if you want evidence of the attorneys rolling on law enforcement to all law enforcement, please go to my conversation I had with Scott K. Summers, the conservator for McHenry County, Illinois, who's corporate counsel, wherein in that conversation he rolled on law enforcement and said it wasn't him, it was them. And it's been interesting since. Yeah, so, I mean, if you really want to look at who's to blame behind this, because, again, you know, going back to that ABC article from uh, circa 1999-2000, um, you know, the courts uh, adjudicated... Uh, Low IQs. Yeah, that uh, they can have uh, hiring policies of uh, IQ of 110 or lower. Right. And it's a requirement so that these law enforcement officers can be manipulated. And this stems all the way back from the 1929 Geneva Convention where the officers were all maintained also as prisoners of war. Not agents, not attorneys since the 1933 uh, Emergency Banking Act, 12 U.S.C. subsection 73, attorneys came in and said, no, no, I'm not hypothecated. Others can be negotiable instruments. And you can see this written into the statutes. Uh, natural person, only a natural person could be a surety up until last year uh, prior to the time when the attorneys and uh, other fictional entities were declared dead by the United States court as per 38 U.S.C. subsection 108. Uh, they were missing. We looked for them all over and we could not find them. Now, and get to, you know, Getting to the next story here. Cyclist died after he was hit by a police car, which then reversed over him oh. before officer tried to arrest him. Oh. 
a cyclist in Canada has died after a police car struck him <coughs> and backed up over him, according to witnesses. Sick. Now, had there been no witnesses, we'd probably not uh, have heard about right, this. Right, it would have been a hit and run. Yep, oh yeah! We're looking, we're looking hard for the hit and run suspect. It wasn't a cop or anything. Interesting. I mean, the mentality of this officer is really at question, okay? Yeah, he's been manipulated by, uh, you know, having the low IQ and then no, having... No, no, that's a psychopath. Well, well a I know, but they helped it along, you know what I'm saying? Well, he really... They enabled him. Right, but he, he had intent to kill, otherwise he wouldn't have run over him once and then twice again to make sure he was dead. You know, and... And I'm sure that the police station will try to spin this. Well, yeah, he he uh, was acting within policy. Yeah, like the guy out in Seattle, that cop that ran over the guy in the middle of the street. And he slowed down, way down, and he looked around him to make sure nobody was looking. And then he sped over the guy. And his car, you could watch it on the video because it was caught on video, the car went over... A, a human form to the extent that the car lifted from the ground and then came back down uh, hardly and he never touched the brakes he knew that he ran over a human being it's very oh, yeah. disgusting so let's see here attorney general cites history of mistrust of ferguson police as he announced a civil rights probe yeah. Into entire department after shooting an unarmed teen, Michael Brown. Yeah, holders kissing babies, everybody. Pretending to be one of you, civil rights violations. That's prostitution. That's right. Holder wants to pimp you all out now under this... Uh, yeah, get to the bottom of everything. Let us. no crisis uh, go to waste. Right. And if you look at 28 U.S.C. itself... The judiciary, you'll find that under the Attorney General is the FBI, Department of Justice. These are the directors of policy that, that enabled the human calling, the depopulation program, as called out by Congress and its minions back in the 70s. So the Justice Department investigation will look at the practices in the past few years of the Ferguson, Missouri Police Department mm -hmm. following the shooting of Michael Brown. Oh, it makes and me feel good. Oh, oh yeah, oh we yeah, we've got the themselves. foxes uh, guarding the hen house Absolutely. here for us. Thank the good Lord God, yes. the landlord, uh, Satan, Congress, Barabas. Thank goodness it can investigate itself and come up with new and, and uh, designs and concepts by which to sell the sheeple. Because after all, it granted itself so many powers by shaking hands with itself to do these things to you. Absolutely. But if you want to look at the schematic of this and what where the real lie uh, of the blame needs to go, okay, we've got to look at, again, 27 CFR 72.11, where all crimes are commercial, means monies. Absolutely. And, and, the, and, the, and the objective is, is to offset that uh, congressional bankruptcy, after all. Yeah, they're protecting revenue. It says right in 27 CFR 72.11 that those are laws or crimes against the revenue. So, and then we've got that, and then so all the lawmakers passing these ridiculous laws that they cash in off, off of. It has nothing to do with protecting humanity. Right. Private acts and acts of commerce. It, it has everything to do with garnering those funds from the Treasury under a guise of helping humanity, which it's all fraud. It's all smoke and mirrors. And, uh, you know, with everything we see going uh, down right now, uh, it should be painfully obvious in your face. Oh, it gets better. You know, uh, interestingly enough, just coming to like uh, uh, some CNN videos on YouTube, uh, the the ones that were talking about uh, campaign rivalry matches going on, you know, it's like a big wrestling uh, promotion out there right now with the uh, campaign season getting ready to 
spark up. Yeah. But but the the view counts on all of those those uh, you know politician versus politician is like you know very very low compared Absolutely. to all the other stuff that people want to read about like cops beating up citizens and Ebola. Right. And, and you have to realize, and the funniest part of that is that they've been hiring these firms to give them likes and views and stuff, and their their views are still lower than they they are elsewhere. And it's just it's interesting. Money doesn't buy everything, does it? Or maybe it does, but maybe they're out of money for some reason. Yeah. Well, some they're reason. they're absconding it. Uh, They've absconded so much of it, they probably have it hidden under their pillows to last for a little bit longer. But it can't last forever because their expenditures are enormous, as Absolutely. you, the taxpayer out there, probably know. Absolutely. They live so high on the hog that, you know, they have to have credit. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to survive. And that, and that, that's something that we've been witnessing recently. And, and, you know, they're really trying to gobble each other up. Did you see that uh, Boeing uh, engineer that they nailed? Yep. These, uh, what are those planes for the, the, the government, the 51s or 31s or whatever they were, that they they had those um, jets built and then they, they don't, they can't use them, 35s, F, whatever they oh, are. Oh, the F-35, okay. yeah, that's been a bottomless pit money hole right. created by Congress to just suck in your... Um, finances and Willie down to nothing, you know, and right, and, and, and really they're spending the money on all their stuff behind the scenes, and they're putting this presentation of the F thirty five in front of you, right? And but now they're going after the engineer instead of themselves and each other. It's just sick because you know all he was doing was following policy. Yeah, and the engineer's going to roll on them and, until he gets whacked, and you know it's a never ending cycle. Uh, for, here, speaking of that, former FBI Director Louis Free, uh, F-R-E-E-H, likely fell asleep at the wheel in Vermont car crash that left him seriously injured, say police. Oh, come on. They're just whacking each other left and right and hurting each other. How many can that... Look at the odds on these things actually naturally occurring. This is sick. They're just vicious. They're like hyenas at the feet. Yeah, well, listen to this. It sounds like they had a Medicaid or something. Former FBI Director Louis Free claims he has no recollection of crashing his SUV off of Vermont 12 in Bernard last week, Vermont State Police said. Yeah, probably because the other peer, FBI peers, slipped a Mickey into your drink and then off you went and... Whoopsie! Yeah. Oh, he lost another one. Oh, no, and he was accidentally brought into law. Look at that word. You know, when a human is harmed, they've been actually using harm and, and other definitions that, that uh, are considerate of the human being. But this guy was injured. Did you see that? I think he's been born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well... So, yeah, what about this attorney apocalypse going on? Um, you were covering some of that. I just, it's, it's just... Uh, it's just story after story lately. Sick. Lawyer arrested for being lawyer. They're just falling uh, out of the sky now, and it, it's, it's, it's celebratory on our end because we know that, you know, the harm is being removed. But, oh my goodness, the, the viciousness of them removing each other and taking each other out is sick. Yeah, let's see here. So, just hitting some more headlines. Suicidal mother drove her three kids in the ocean in family minivan because she had low blood sugar. Yeah, it wasn't because she was a psychopath or nothing like that. It was that low blood sugar. South Carolina woman who ended up driving into the ocean with her three kids still in the car seats is claiming low blood sugar led to her making the bad decision. Okay, and that was a story that was in the headlines about six weeks ago uh, or so. And, you know, I mean, all these stories. Oh, so did you hear about that, uh, the guy that left his kid in his uh, uh, car to die? Uh is now looking at um, 
being tried for murder. Yeah, and I think that one's a posture. I was trying to get to the bottom of that, but he looks like a CIA operative. Um, they said he was at the naval base when he when this occurrence happened, and I again, you know, from the mouth of the FBI agent that doesn't uh, remember where he was or what he was doing, I have a feeling that you know somebody's peers are slipping the mickeys and stuff because the odds of these things are astronomical, and to see these occurrences over and over again is just. So, yeah, I had one here today. earlier. It just came up today. Um, I have to pull that one back up. A Navy officer left this kid in the car to die while he was at work at the uh, naval base. Right. Oh, so there was another one. Uh, this is just recent. This is one. today. We're going back in time on this uh other one, and I don't have the names pulled up in front of me. I apologize. Right. The one I was reading today was the Navy officer that was in his office when this occurrence occurred. But the story, it doesn't make sense how it happened. It wasn't like a forgetful accident or whatever. Um, it looks like he's been, uh, he's a hit of his peers. And, and um, I'll probably have, hopefully I'll have more information on the story uh, by Saturday, if not tomorrow, uh, for the public law. But uh, given the um, the basic schematic and the establishment of what the CIA is and everything else, and reading as much information as I came across my desk today, it looks like somebody, possibly a CIA operative, uh, was made a hit and his child was murdered for him. Another story here on the front page of Daily Mail, horrifying moments. This is a video. Uh, six police officers shot a mental, mentally ill man armed with only a pellet gun 80 times until he had no face left. Yeah, that's just absolute psychopathy. And of course it stems from... And of course they were just following police policy. Absolutely. It's in our policy book. We have to shoot him 80 times in the face Absolutely. if we think he's a threat. They have to make sure that he's dead so they can diagnose him as dead and... And garner those monies because they're not able to to get money through the CMS system. Right. Well, that's going to be proved to be more and more difficult here, though. Now, isn't it? It is, and that, I think that's why they're getting more aggressive. Eighty times in the face. That's uh, not just killing somebody, but it's overkill. And it, it that is the actions of somebody who's very angry about something in the first place. Yeah. Well, all all six of them were. Right. Uh, so we have a bunch of angry. Police officers out there uh, with low IQs and guns that are programmed to follow attorney work product doctrine and offset congressional bankruptcy at their behest. Right. You scenes, meek. scenes from the surveillance video show the police officers filing on Jose Walter Garza outside a Texas truck stop on Saturday until the 30 year old collapsed in a hail of more than 80 bullets. Sick. Mr. Garza, who suffers from, well, it should be suffered, uh, from schizophrenia, eventually lies motionless as a group of officers surround him. Please say the circumstances of the shooting appear justified. What uh, the I'm, hell? I'm surprised they weren't uh, all giving each other the high five there. Right. Why not use a, a grenade instead or maybe some of these uh, missiles and justify that too? Uh, corporate counsel needs to be held accountable for that one, especially. I mean, that's sick. But, you know, they said back in, there's a book by uh, Roder, Thomas Roder, Psychiatrist, The Men Behind Hitler. And uh, Chapter 5, Uses Bread Gobblers, it says in there, you know, that if you can convince a society to dehumanize itself, it's easier to control and manipulate and, of course, identify human beings as useless bread gobblers by which they can be killed and slaughtered in these manners without anybody noticing anything, without anybody raising a stink. Ah, oh, he was just mentally disabled or uh, as the story goes along, he was just a Mexican. No, he was a human being and he was gunned down by the, the federal state's directives to gun him down uh, in a perpetual action of Nazi Germany. And, you know, I... Forty-two females per day are dying of accidental 
prescription drug overdoses through the psychological industry. The same psychiatrists are killing females at, at, at just a horrifying rate of speed that have been gunning down children. And if humanity doesn't wake up to being in Auschwitz, it will eventually overtake them like it did last time. But if they realize and they stop patronizing Satan or the new Hitler, the gray Hitler, it stops. And it's, it's been a very interesting journey to watch the, you know, again, the agents this week are just going nuts. But sheeple also have to realize what's going on and take part in uh, being their authority, the authority. What do you think of that recently with Joan Rivers? She passed away today. I don't know if you've heard about that, but uh, it, it's been an absolute well, I, disgusting. Yeah, I know. I pointed out last night on my show that uh, you were, you know, we're watching her uh, being killed right now in real time, and then then I get up today and uh, see that she indeed indeed passed away then over the night. Right. And it was all postured. All of humanity got to watch that posture this time, accidentally going into cardiac arrest. For you, well, you know right away when they use that word, she's being made comfortable. Right. Okay. That means they're killing her. Right. She's out the door, and that's what they tell everybody uh, by which to kill them with these prescription lethal injections. These are actually lethal injections. The same prescription medications are used in lethal injection as what the average consumer is consuming. Uh, let's see, and, and this society is just, I mean, Congress has been so good at grooming these psychopaths. Here's another example of that. A father shot dead by road rage driver who chased him down as he drove to pick up children from first day of school. Michigan man driving pick up his two ch young children from school has been shot dead in what police believe was a road rage attack. Derek Fleming, 43, and his wife Amy Fleming had just had lunch together and were on their way to pick up their children after the first day of school Tuesday when they announced Martin Edward Zale, 69, in his, when they encountered Martin Edward Zale, 69, uh, in his 2012 Dodge pickup. A representative from the Fleming family, attorney William Moore, says Zale was screaming down a side street so fast that Amy Fleming believed he was going to hit their 2014 Ford Escape. Wow. Sick. Okay, for a driving incident. Okay, oh, you cut me off. That's going to cost me a, a second in my travel time. Oh, I'm going to take about, uh, you know, maybe the rest of my life here, uh, at least uh, an extra ten minutes and chase this driver down. And, uh, you know, I mean, it just, you, you can drive over the speed limit or you drive the speed limit. Okay, either way, it's not a violation of public law, but, um. The, the, point, the, the, point of, the point of the matter is, if you're going for, you know, your typical local drive, uh, you know, 10, 20 minute drive, okay, how much time is that really going to save you? All right, there is no, this, see, this is the de delineation between a psychopath and a human being. A psychopath is more concerned about uh, getting uh, to work on time than he is about uh, running over a, a bicyclist and I referenced that story about the cop who said there's you know they said there's gonna be no charges against him for running over the cyclist even though he was texting uh, when he veered off into the bike lane right and, and you have to realize too that uh, since the inception of politics Usually it's the FBI that are gunning people down in their cars on the way to school so that the local community and the local government can offer them protection from this, uh, quote, uh, madman or madwoman on the loose. And it's always been the FBI or an FBI informant that's facilitating these things. And we can all go back to um, Chicago this last uh, couple of years here where 
You know, there was a detective that was nailed for uh, T-boning a woman in his car. He caused the accident, and then he fined her for it. And the evidence was all there that said he T-boned her. It wasn't, she was never at fault. However, the court went through the legal process and allowed that to fester and grow. And then finally they said, oopsie. Well, where are all those monies that they collected? Where are all those investments? Where are all those tranches? Where is all that money that they got during the court process while that case or the estate was in seizure? That's what I want to know. And again, today, uh, we're dealing with the same thing. One of the longest uh, running uh, prisoners on death row today was released along with his brother after there was DNA evidence suggesting that he never committed a crime in the first place. But he'd been in prison collecting all of these monies for corporate counsel and facilitating all these derivatives and revenue streams and it's just profound because at the long end of that you know everybody feels relief but it's not relief that was what the business schematic intended to do okay yeah and so the um getting back to uh, filling the holes here from my earlier stories the sexting georgia dad who left his toddler son to die in the hot car faces death penalty after he's charged with murder that was Justin Ross Harris and um, he's going to be charged with murder uh, for um, leaving his 22 month old son Cooper in his car for seven hours uh, did you catch the oh yeah and so the headline on the other one though the father is arrested after toddler dies in hot car after being left all day in Navy base where dad worked mm -hmm. Navy officials say a 17 month old boy was found dead in a vehicle at the naval station in southern Maryland well I guess his Navy job was more important than uh, his own son right. uh, did you catch the one about uh, Delaware Delaware governor accidentally tweets a photograph of a woman in bondage gear oh my goodness no I didn't Delaware governor Jack Markle's office mistakenly tweeted the racy photo while publicizing a public education initiative. Ugh. Yeah, it's just, they did the same thing back when they started selling that stuff. Remember Hustler and all the hullabaloo in the 30s and stuff and uh, what's her name? I forgot her name right now, but uh, man, they're just disgusting and you know, it, it's written in Revelation. These filthy pigs promoting these things, and dirty birds, unclean fowl promoting the most disgusting concepts. And uh, well, the, the most disgusting garbage. thing that people are gonna start start to really uh, cringe here as they find out more and more that uh, all these wars that they're uh, enticed into uh, throwing their you know children in there, you know, so they can be thrown on the uh, bayonets of the enemy uh, to, uh, you know, protect the interests of capitalism and offsetting congressional bankruptcy. Uh, you, you know, all these wars, when you find out that they're all created, uh, maintained, you know, by the same entity on both sides, okay, because human beings don't have a natural propensity to go, you know, uh, wake up in the morning and load their gun and start looking for people to shoot. Right. No, they're just innocent, and that, and that's why Congress but, takes advantage. Yeah, and Congress will help you out there, though, and they'll create the enemy for you. They're, oh, we got another Emmanuel Goldstein. It's ISIS this time. Right. Oh, you better be very afraid. You know, you know, you'll you'll need our protection. You know, we're here to protect you. Uh, so. That one story came out of North Carolina. I wanted to touch on that before we're out of time. From the RT.com USA, DNA clears North Carolina's longest-serving death row inmate and his half-brother. North Carolina on Wednesday released an inmate who had served three decades, 30 years, on death row, a day after declaring he and his half-brother were innocent in the 1983 rape and murder of an 11-year-old girl. Superior Court Judge Douglas Sasser overturned the convictions of Henry McCollum, 50, who was on death row, and Leon Brown, 46, who was serving a life sentence. Both were convicted of raping and murdering 11-year-old Sabrina Bowie.
However, a recent investigation by the North Carolina Innocence Inquiry Commission, NCIIC, found no DNA evidence of the crime scene that could be traced back to McClellan or Brown. Instead, as Sasser noted, the DNA of another man was found on a cigarette butt left near the body of the dead girl, saying the new evidence, tested in 2010, contradicted the case. Put forth by prosecutors, the DNA matched that of Roscoe Artis, a convicted sex offender who lived a block away from the soybean field where Bowie was found. Artis is serving a life sentence for another murder and rape that occurred just weeks after Bowie's death. They knew. And I bet if we looked into his personal history, he was an informant for the FBI. He had a criminal past. They held that over his head. They played catch and release with his prospective murderer until he had festered into what they created. And this well, it's either that... Or there's the incentive to get somebody charged for the crime. Doesn't matter who, as long as they gotta charge them there, so they can get paid. Right. So now, there's a it's a financial interest. They and they knew back then these people were not guilty. Absolutely. I bet you dirt to doubt. Absolutely, because it was directed by the FBI, and we can read that in book two of the Church Committee reports. Now, something that would made me sick to read. And I'd like to point out the Statue of Liberty here. Give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. These two men were absolutely railroaded and taken advantage of. And I quote from RT.com USA, quote, Both McCollum and Brown are mentally challenged, having low IQs, according to the lawyers. The men, 19 and 15 at the time, they were children, respectively, confessed to the crime after lengthy police interrogations. Now, only, only, only if the FBI is involved in a murder is the FBI going to force a confession. Yep. Now, think about that for a moment, folks, because you have been railroaded to believe that they're your friend. They force confessions all the time. We have unlimited amounts of evidence providing this. Book two of the church committee reports actually goes into detail about the FBI terrorism of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. way back when. And when they could not, could not turn humanity against him, they alone had to assassinate him. Now, his wife, won, his family won the lawsuit against the FBI. It was a civil suit, and they won that case several years ago. And it's been off the radar for humanity for a long time. I don't know if it's because humanity doesn't want to believe that they have hunters in their backyard, but you have to realize what's going on. This is Nazi Germany all over again because it always was. Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist. Planned Parenthood was a depopulation program. All of these things are intended to cull human humanity and keep the overhead down for these corporations that are promoting all of these things and investing in your death. Yes. Um, yeah, Mulder and Scully and Skinner, X-Files, that was all uh, just a, uh, you know, a uh, campaign PR stunt for the FBI. Uh, more on this story about this naval base um, guy. Father 40 arrested at naval base where he works after forgetting to drop his baby son off at daycare, leaving him to die in a hot car seven hours later. John Jenick, 40, of Leonardtown, was supposed to have taken his young son to the daycare center but forgot. During the course of the workday, Jenick made two other journeys in the car, but failed to spot his 15-month-old baby. Right, that's what you're saying. Either it's a hit or he did it in, intentionally. I think he might have been drugged up, like the, the, the story that you were reading about the FBI director that got in an accident and didn't know how he got there. And they did the same thing to the, to the officer down in Florida, remember? Yeah. The one that had the altercation and the, uh, shot the guy in the uh, movie theater. Same thing, it was the Manchurian candidate, and everybody's witnessing this, and, and, and it's all through prescription medication and influence of psychiatrists. Yeah, either way, it's just quite sad to see all these reports of babies being left in their car to die in the hot sun because they're too, because, you know, the parents or whoever's toting the car, the kid around, are too busy uh, chasing down that almighty dollar, you know, or, or worse, like you said, uh, through the action of uh, medications and 
other, uh, you know, imposed force, you know, this is happening. Absolutely. Either way, so innocent young children are dying. Right. And the, the odds are against these happening by happy chance. I mean, this is like... Well, how many have we seen many. in the last month? It's, right. all, it's, it's through, I've never seen right. this many children being, you know, reported on dying in hot cars as Absolutely. I have this summer. And it's not even been a hot summer. Right, and that's what evidence is an agenda. It's not an accidental happen chance. That, that is the evidence of an agenda. Oh, we'll be back tomorrow night, folks. TammyPepperman.org with Public Law with Bo and Tammy. Uh, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be well, everybody. Thanks, Bo. All right. We'll see you.